Once we have learned uh, fundamentals of basketball, it's time to learn uh, about faults and violations. Okay, so let's get started. And first we'll talk about violations. Double dribble. There are three things you should put in your mind about double dribbles. While you're playing basketball, you cannot hold the ball unless and until you are either giving pass or you are shooting. Okay, let me repeat. Suppose you are playing basketball, okay? Now, you can't stop the ball and again dribble. This is called double dribble. So when you are dribbling, you know, your mind should be telling you, okay, I'm dribbling the ball, I shall stop only when I'm ready to either give pass or shoot, otherwise I'm not going to stop the ball. Because if I stop the ball and if I can't give pass or if I can't shoot and if I dribble, then it's double dribble, it's a violation, okay? So this is the first thing. Second thing is you can never dribble the ball with two hands, like this, you can't, you know, like never dribble the ball with two hands. This is called double dribble. You're not allowed to do that in basketball. Now, let's talk about walking or traveling violation. You have to remember two things when it comes to walking or traveling violation. First thing, first thing is you cannot move even a one step without dribbling. Let me show what I mean. For example, you got ball. This is walking or traveling violations. You cannot move, you cannot take even a one step without dribbling. If you, if you dribble the ball, you are, you are allowed to walk anywhere in the court. Yeah? Because basketball is a dribbling game, it's not a uh, walking game. So whenever you get the ball, you dribble. You can't take one step and dribble. That's violation. That's, that's called a traveling violation. Now, next thing is, wh whenever you are standing in the court, one leg is always a pivot leg. It's called pivot leg. And what pivot leg does is it allows you to move in a circular way around the coat. Uh, I mean, in the coat, sorry. Okay, one leg is always a pivot leg and I cannot move that pivot leg before dribbling. For example, this is pivot leg. Okay, now if I just move this and dribble, then that's again traveling violation. So, two things. First thing is you cannot take more than a one step when you are not dribbling. Second is you cannot move your pivot leg before dribbling. Now carrying violation. See, whenever you are dribbling, your hand should always be on the top of the ball. But as a beginner, what I used to do is dribble and you know put my hand under the ball like this and this is called carrying violations okay we are not allowed to dribble our dribble the ball by putting our hand under the ball so you see this is this is this is carrying because you're putting your hand under the ball and you're dribbling under and dribbling you're like rolling the ball under this is carrying violations when you're dribbling your hand should be on the top of the ball always on the top can be a little bit side, side, but can't be under. That's carrying violations. And now let's talk about backcourt violation. This is applied only when you are playing full court. And what happens, what this, what this rule tells is, whenever you or your team takes the ball and goes behind midcourt line or half court line, you cannot come back. For example, you are dribbling the ball, you're, you're playing full court, you're, dri you, you're dribbling the ball, you just cross the mid court line or half court line, and 
you know, there's a lot of pressure, a defense is coming. You, you cannot go back to your court once you have crossed the mid-court line. If you do that, it's called backward violations or half-court violations. Very simple. And finally, let's talk about held ball. Okay, one ball is for one player. Okay, if two players hold the ball together, it's called held ball. And that's also, uh, let's not call it violation, but um, the game stops once um, a referee sees uh, two players holding one ball. And after that, he decides what should be done and uh, who should, um, you know, who's, whom should the ball given. Well, look at my grammar. And referee decide, decides whom the ball should be given. Also, in, in you know, advanced game or college level game or in NBA, there are rules such as um, three second violations, five second violations or 24 second, second violations. Uh, is, is these rules are for uh, a little bit advanced player. I'm gonna make uh, another video for that. Once you have learned about um, fundamentals and violations, it's time to see falls. Very important. So, can you hear that mm, sound? You can, right? Please don't focus there. Focus here what I'm saying. I'm sorry that, that that's very distracting, but please focus. Focus on what I'm saying. I'm talking about very important things, okay? Falls usually occur when there is unnecessary physical contact between you and your opponent. You are not allowed to hit, slap, or push, or hold, or make any illegal contact with your opponent player during the game and the most important thing is if you make five falls then you are out of the court you will not be allowed to enter the court for that particular game and if the fall is very dangerous then you might also you know be not allowed to play for whole tournament so be very careful when it comes to fall and try to avoid making falls. First, shooting fall. In game, whenever you are in shooting position, either it's inside the three-point line or outside the three-point line. When you are shooting the ball or when another player is shooting the ball, no one can disturb the player. If anyone disturbs while shooting, then that's shooting fall unless a player from same team comes and pushes opponent players can't do anything you know when a player starts shooting they can block the ball from a little bit of distance but they can't uh, you know hit they can't hit that player who is shooting or, or or they can't even touch now there are two cases let's say you're you're shooting basketball from outside the three-point line and your opponent hits you in some way makes illegal physical contact if you miss the shot then you'll get three free throws from free throw lane all right and when this happens inside the three-point line i mean when you are inside three-point line and you are trying to shoot and your opponent comes and makes illegal contact or touches you hits you pushes you and at that time you'll get two free throws and that's 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 the that's what happens if you do shooting fall to your opponent player all right so whenever your opponent player is shooting try to stay a little bit at a, at a distance don't try to make physical contact with him you can block but no uh, unnecessary uh, you know contact there okay that's shooting fall now let's talk about charging and blocking. Let's say you are, you are in the game and you are moving towards basketball. This, this sort of uh, falls occur when you are advancing toward basketball, toward, towards the basket, okay? For example, let's say you are dribbling the ball and you are moving towards basket and 
a player is there or your defender is there who is in a very stationary position very firmly standing he is very stationary you cannot hit him or push him or like go through him that's charging fall similarly or however if the defender I mean let's say you are dribbling the ball and uh, going towards the basket and if the defender is not established I mean if 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 he just he just he, he just moving and trying to block you that's called blocking fall all right so so this charging and blocking depends upon whether the defender is standing stationary is well you know established or not okay if he's well established you have to uh, you know you have to make some moves to go across him or you know to you have to do some faking but if the defender is not well established he's just trying to block you and that's fall okay and that's called blocking fall now let's talk about flagrant fall flagrant fall occur when there is very harmful physical contact or playing aggressively hitting slapping pushing and most of the time these are intentional and whenever this sort of incident happen in basketball or like if if you or your team player make flagrant falls then your opponent team will get free throw or ball possession finally let's talk about technical fall technical fall can be committed by player as well as coaches and this, this this sort of fall has nothing to do with physical contact it's it's all about your manners how you behave in the basketball court if you use fall language or if you start making unnecessary argument with uh, players or referees that's when this fall is called technical fall and do try to avoid this fall play with respect and have fun and that's it you've learned basic rules of basketball including falls and violations if this video was helpful for you then please consider subscribing if i have missed any important point or you know if anything stood out for you if you liked something that i um, talked about then please mention it in the comment box so that you know all the other friends can learn from it and also if you want me to make similar videos in future then please consider subscribing and 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 so many ends and this is the last end next video is going to be about how to dribble basketball and it's coming very soon if you don't want to miss that video also consider subscribing thank you so much for watching guys stay amazing and keep practicing basketball see you in the next video